Hey everyone, Paige Castellan here again for my second vlog entry. Um, I don't know if I'll start them all out like that because that's kind of weird, but I'm just excited. And I'm excited to share this topic with you today because it is the topic of unconscious bias and something that I've been really trying to learn about a lot lately. I recently read the book Blind Spot, which talks about identifying your unconscious biases and trying to understand you know how to overcome them because at the end of the day like I said we're not gonna bash anybody we're not saying this is bad if you do X Y or Z we're trying to say oh shoot okay how did that make me feel how did that make someone else feel how can we recover how can we be happy <laughs> so now this whole conversation or this whole idea of this topic came from a discussion I had with my best friend and my best friends in medical school and I might get some terms wrong but I am definitely much more educated about the medical field now that my best friend's been going through it and she was sending me terrible snapchat pictures of herself wearing a surgical mask that hair bonnet thing scrubs lab coat everything that she needed for the office that day and she was just sending me all these ridiculous like pictures again if we're talking about terrible angles they were all terrible angles and later that day she texted me and said you will never believe what happened so she then proceeded to tell me all about this encounter she had with a young salesman that came into the office and um, she was doing her thing and this guy comes up to her and said hey are you a scrub tech and she said oh no and he quickly responded, are you a nurse? And she said, oh, like, no. And he responded again and said, oh, then like, what do you do here? And she was thinking, okay, like, um, I'm in med school, like doing a rotation up here. And he said, oh, okay, hmm, okay. Um, and then pulled out his business card and gave it to her and said, give me a call. I'd love to take you out sometime. And then she just was like left standing with his card like okay and now there's two things that just kill me about this story and the first one of course is um, like uh, a millennial woman never goes into the office the chemical plant the surgical room the I don't know even like the classroom like wherever like if you're teaching like you're never going and hoping one of your colleagues or one of your clients is going to ask you out on a date in a meeting. It just never happens. So like if any guys are watching, don't do that. And if you're watching and that's happened to you and it made you feel uncomfortable, you're not alone because you're there to do your job and somebody else is creating this awkward dynamic now between you two. And again, uh, it's just like why does that happen but the main thing we want to focus on today is the second part of this where the guy never assumed that she was potentially a med student and again I think like especially the medical field well and the teachers like one of my best friends a teacher and I just don't know how people are up and moving and taking care of all these people all the time like the medical and teaching profession I think I would be exhausted like I just sit at a desk for eight hours a day usually and I still am tired then so I think everybody in those fields is awesome and really hard working but my friend has told me this a couple times where she'll go out in her scrubs and when she tells people that she's in med school everyone's always surprised they're like oh really oh my gosh I would have never I would have never guessed and you know it's some people could say oh you just have to get more confidence but like first of all I'm not gonna tell my best friend that and second of all no my best friends like awesome she's happy with her life she's the smartest person probably in her med school and she just people don't associate being five foot ten and blonde and funny and maybe having curly hair and wearing high heels and all these things with being a doctor and I experienced a little bit of that well I experienced that at Virginia Tech not even a little bit I experienced it at Virginia Tech when I say 
oh, when I said, I'm studying electrical engineering. And you get that painful look like, oh, okay, really? Wow, I wouldn't have expected that. And, you know, it's like, what do I think? You know, I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, I know, like, haha. -ha. Because it's 2018. And, like, what do you mean you can't expect that I'm smart? What do you mean I c you didn't expect that I could do some, like, do that type of field? Or, I don't know. So, it's a challenging question. And I think that as long as you're doing what aligns with your passion, that's, like, that's the goal. You know, that's the only thing you should be worrying about. But if you're not doing what you're passionate about, because people keep telling you like, mm, I don't know if that's a good fit for you, or I don't know if I could see you there, then I have some tips. Because again, you know, this is the part where I'm talking about experience and the feelings and then the tips, like what can we do actionable to change these things? Now, I think the first thing would be when you do get questioned like, Oh, really don't agree don't say oh yeah like I know because my favorite quote is the standard you walk past is the standard you accept and that's by General Morrison and um, it is it's a good quote because it talks about like if you are letting someone say something or something happen that you don't necessarily agree with or that's perpetuating a culture that you don't agree with and you don't say anything, then you're just kind of letting it go. So question it. Say if someone says, like people tell me all the time, oh my God, I, I wouldn't have thought you studied electrical engineering. And I say, oh, like why? And then you get to watch them think like, oh God, shoot, what do I say? Like, why do I think that? You know, is that not accepted? It? And then they start to question, wait, maybe I, why do I have this, bl these blinders on or unconscious bias of what I think someone else could accomplish just based on preconceived notions, stereotypes, whatever. Now, the second thing is find a support system that tells you like you can do it. I think support is like the number one key to success. I've been in situations where people are telling me, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And I'm like, yes, I can do it. And I succeed. I've also been in situations where people come up to me and say, hmm, maybe, maybe you shouldn't do that ever again. Like maybe this isn't the right thing for you. Maybe you're just bad at this. And I definitely never take that excuse. I'm like, I will figure out a way to be the best at this um, if it aligns with my passions. So surround yourself with the people who say you can do it because you'll succeed. And it's just no fun to battle people and challenge people that are constantly telling you you can't do something. And then the third thing is be that person for, be that support system for others. You know, if you're in a meeting, like, uh, I guess use a personal example, right? So I was in a meeting once and um, one of my best friends, I saw like she wasn't getting enough responsibility for her level of capacity for just doing things. Like she's awesome and like such a hard worker, but I feel like people thought she couldn't handle things. So I was presenting and I took the opportunity to remind everyone in a subtle way, I said, I want to thank my, I want to thank my team and especially huge thank you to this woman who did X, Y, and Z to help me with my project. Um, I think with her knowledge and coming in with this experience that helped our team move forward, you know, and then when you vocally publicly show appreciation for someone or give someone a compliment, People realize that like people are thinking oh my gosh okay wow huh and this is awesome because it's a no fun fighting alone fighting the status quo alone and when you can show support for someone else and then they show it for you and then you build this whole network of just people trying to succeed but you're succeeding together and to sum this all up the big thing is really the connection between why it's a big deal that 
this salesman didn't think that my best friend didn't assume that my best friend could be a doctor that wasn't even one of the questions he asked and going back to unconscious bias um, when people have this view of what they think a person can accomplish and what they think that their capabilities are eventually you know if you have a hundred people starting out in a field like a couple fall out and they think oh well, shoot well like if everyone else is questioning why I'm here why am I here like I'll restate that if everyone else is questioning why I'm here then why am I here so then they go to a field that maybe is more inclusive and then a couple more people and a couple more people and a couple more people and then you get to college and the workforce and you only have like a very small percentage of that group still there and still passionate about that idea and that section of the like job force and you know if we if we want more diversity because diversity is directly related to innovation um, because you can't solve problems for the entire world if you only have a portion of the world solving them you it's just you don't know what the unmet needs are for everyone um, we need to stop thinking in this box of what a woman can do a millennial can do a any person any type of person out there not just the minority maybe a majority but stop putting people in these little boxes and saying you know what this is where you fit and if you're not in there it confuses me and I don't know you should reconsider so at the end of the day I gave some I gave the three tips the standard you walk past is the standard you accept support other people no, I think it was find your support system and then support other people and again make sure at the end of the day you're following what your passions are and don't be scared to fight that status quo if your passions don't align with someone else's vision of where they think what they think you can accomplish so thank you everyone I hope you enjoyed this message I hope um, I hope not too many of you are facing this out there, but for those of you who are, I think we've all been there, so go rock it.